Hey everyone, it's me, your professor. Um, I'm doing a short video today because I'm not able to get to the good internet connection. Um, have some other things I'm doing. So today we're going to spend most of our time on Discord, uh, which you would have seen in the email, but I did promise you a short video. And so I am going to introduce some concepts from um, the book, Digital Art by Christian Paul. Um, and so we will do that. Um, at some point too, I'll introduce you to our little pup, our dog, in fact, you can look at a picture. There you go, it's exciting. Um, all right, go away, wait, sorry. There I am, and now I'm back. Okay, so all right, it's only going to be about 20 minutes. I'll send you this video. And again, I'm just going to be going over uh, pretty much the first half lecture two of digital art. So uh, before we do that, though, um, we're not doing the music thing today because, you know, copyright. I uh, don't want to load a video up with their video playing, if that makes sense. But I will, will begin that again on Monday when I see you all sort of virtually in person uh, live as they say all right but I do want to actually mention something that just happened yesterday for those of you who don't know so I'm gonna switch off this and go here um, so here on my screen this is space.com a lot of ads unfortunately but you might notice or you might have heard that NASA the U.S. Space Agency, yes, the U.S. does do a few good things, um, their robotic rover landed Perseverance, it's the size of an SUV, so it's, it's a very big thing, traveled all the way to Mars and landed exactly or almost exactly where they wanted it to land. In fact, they know this because it took this picture. So here is the very first picture taken by the Perseverance Mars rover on Mars. Um, the fact that, that, that they could do this is, is pretty amazing in my book. So um, if you haven't read about it, I would suggest you do. It's a pretty incredible. And uh, the goal of Perseverance as a technology is to try to find signs of past life or, or maybe even current life. Uh, it has made me wonder, though, as a digital artist, I've always wanted to do something that involved a rover on another planet. Unfortunately, I don't have the $2.7 billion that it costs. But if I did, I probably wouldn't spend it on the rover. But still, it would be nice. All right, so let's get into the stuff. Um, first off, this is a uh, little screenshot from the book Digital Art by Christian Paul, which should you should have the third edition. Um, here's the cover, just in case you've forgotten what it looks like. And I erroneously told you to read the first three chapters. I, I really actually just meant the first three sections, which in my mind was taking you through the end of chapter one. So I'm sorry if that caused any confusion. No, you don't have to read the whole book by today. If you did, well done, but you didn't have to. Um, really, we're just going to be finishing the introduction in Chapter 1, uh, which is what I'll be discussing today briefly, um, and then we'll continue on with a continued discussion of Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 on Monday. So the goal is for you to read the introduction in Chapter 1 by Monday, basically. Okay, so I'll send that to you in email as well. Um, so up on MIT... Uh, UIB is a um, PDF, and I have now maybe closed it. Oh, now I gotta find it again. Um, but that has two different lectures on it, and so we're going to be looking at the first uh, part of that. So that would be what lecture two in digital art. So let me grab it quickly. All right, so it's up on the up on the server, MIT UIB. Here it is. 
Awesome. Okay. So let me go back to the beginning. Do, 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 do. All right. So this is kind of picking bits and pieces from the book. Um, the, you'll notice the first chapter is looking at digital technologies as a tool. Let me briefly just describe what uh, the author is trying to say about that. In essence, a lot of digital artists, um, a lot of people that work with technology, specifically digital technology, are not using or they're not making works for digital interaction. They're not necessarily making works that have to be experienced in a digital way. Um, instead, they're using the digital as a tool to make something that's a print, to make something that's photography or sculpture or even video, which has anti which has uh, sort of um, the predecessor to that, obviously, is just film. Uh, before that, it was, you know, even just series of images or basic sort of animations made on cells and that kind of thing. So... The first section is really thinking about how do artists or how have artists use digital technologies as, as a tool for making what might be perceived as sort of a more of a traditional artwork. Um, and so the areas really looking at is digital imaging and sculpture, which are the two primary areas that the author's looking at. Um, these things are important. So when you look at this PDF, make sure that you sort of emphasize these four key points. Um, you know, digital art has more features than this, obviously, but, but generally this applies to most of it. So it says multiple manipulation of combination of art forms. Almost everything we do, I say we because I'm a digital artist, is multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary. It combines lots of different art forms. I mean, when I make things, typically I make the sound. I make the movement, I make the animation, I make the words, I make the images, or, I, or I, at least I do the second thing, which is I recontextualize or reappropriate um, elements of my own work, elements of other people's work, other people's code, this kind of thing, um, and rework that into my own work, which is a very popular thing in a lot of digital artworks. Now, obviously there are elements and concerns about copyright, and admittedly, the field is changing continuously. And indeed, something I'll talk about on Monday is now they're even talking about ways in which galleries can create originals, uh, which brings us to our next point where, you know, what is an original in digital art? Like a painting, as we've talked about before, is a physical thing you can hold in your hand and say, this is the only one in the world. And so it has a rarity. And that rarity gives it a value. You know, things increase in value usually in human society if they're rare. And that's why a lot of artists, or some artists at least, um, can make money off their artwork. But with digital artists, you don't have that rarity necessarily. But now with the use of blockchain technology and a range of other things, which again, we'll talk about on Monday, um, you can sort of start creating this. So even this third notion that Paul brings up isn't something that is, is, is changing. As the technology changes, so do these things. All right, um, and accessibility really is this notion that generally as the work can be reproduced, it's accessible to a wider audience. You know, it's not just people who go to a gallery, it's people who have a computer or a phone, that sort of thing. All right, um, so we start off early works, and by early, again, we're meaning like 1980s, 1970s. Um, I know we say this a lot in this class, but it really is true. You have to kind of understand when the work was made to understand uh, the technologies they were using, and th that has an impact, you know. Some of these works are powerful and meaningful because of when they were made and how they were made. Um, nowadays, doing things like composite and collage, like this work by Nancy Burson um, that's exploring ideas of beauty and, and taking composite images of what are considered to be beautiful people and trying to rethink them and, and reform them and composite them together or collect them together and form one image out of many images. Um, this is something that you can get an app to do now, right? But in 1982, this was a difficult thing and it was 
an innovative use of the technology and it represented a whole a whole field that was developing uh, that wasn't quite even there yet it was emerging all right um throughout this pdf by the way whenever you open it there are a lot of links um, and i'm going to look at most of those this first one actually is weirdly enough the website has gone down since we made this um, but I'll see if I can find a separate link for it. Um, but basically what this is art advertisement, which is kind of a way of saying, you know, increasingly people are making artworks either a using advertising as a base, um, you know, to sort of you like remix it, rethink it as a way of critiquing it. Or alternatively, they're actually just making sort of digital creations using digital tools um, for advertising and you'll find this is generally a trend with a lot of digital artists is that more than painters more than other types of artists i find digital artists work with corporations uh, as sort of like an advertising almost um, a lot more often uh, very it's relatively common to get commissioned by a company that's a commercial entity to have you do things that are still artworks. Whereas with painting and some of the traditional art forms is less, less likely. Um, so this is, I, I find this work kind of hilarious. This is a person that Paul Smith has made a series of images. Uh, here's the person's website, which is again, that link here. Uh, and they put themselves into all these sort of different scenes of action movies. Um, and in fact, I'd strongly recommend that you read through the description on this. So again, click on the link and it takes you through to the description and read through it because it gives you a sense of why the artist is creating these things. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is people replicating action scenes nowadays is something that, you know, is a lot more common. But again, in the year 2000, this was kind of edgy stuff and and it it made it <laughs> kind of fascinating and and fun and strange which a lot of the works we're looking at are all those things uh fascinating fun and strange um back in the early noughties there was a lot of video artists who were starting to take off and do well in the art world um and a lot of people who were making these really stylized, very expensively produced, very um, difficult to uh, stage images, which is quite fascinating. So this is a, a, an artist who puts together these very beautiful and also very expensively produced and staged images collections of, of human bodies and people doing different things um and then they print them out you know and they they show up in a gallery um and this kind of thing made possible with digital tools you know it's it is a composite to some extent it's a collage of different elements put together in one scene um so they would film or take pictures each individually of these different people and then they put them all together into one giant scene and it makes for a strange sort of surreal but very visually vivid um experience thus called fictitious reality now this image representation you know this is kind of looking at the opposite end so if this is hyper reality um, this is looking at what's beneath everything. So this artist has made images that are representing individual stills in uh, a photograph, for example. Like not a normal photograph, but a digital photograph. So, you know, how can we create a representation of the data that is represented by a photograph. So it's a very meta, very conceptual idea. And, and I found that, you know, digital art kind of enables this kind of conceptual exploration of um, the tools that are being used to create digital art. 
Alright, this is a video, I mean, I've, I don't know, I, I like it and don't like it at the same time. Um, I, I think it's beautiful. I won't go through the whole thing, uh, but what happens here basically is they're using a filter, more or less, and that filter is allowing for any movement to kind of be stretched over itself. And so it makes this really kind of surreal effect. Um, and it's interesting. It's beautiful and it's kind of a bit surreal uh, in a stretched sort of way. But it's an example of how you could make a tool yourself, in, in this case, uh, a, a type of um, rethinking of the data from an image and stretching it over itself can make for this kind of beautiful, strange experience. Um, and again, completely impossible without the digital tools. So again, you can click on it and take to it. I definitely recommend you watch that. So, you know, we've looked at imagery and, and different ways that digital imaging can be used to create works that are maybe video that's manipulated or um, photographs that are manipulated or data generated images, um, collages, that sort of thing. And then we can also look at sculpture. Now, this is a, a, a 3D printed sculpture before 3D printing was around. So, you know, if this artist had seen a 3D printer, like we have nowadays, they'd be like, oh, great, wow, I can do all sorts of things. Um, but in the year 2000, this was relatively original, you know, relatively new. Um, so this is an example of, in fact, there's a probably a better picture of it here, um, of an artist who's using digital tools to create a 3D sculpture and, and then make it physical. Um, and, and this is increasingly common now, um, but it means that some of the ideas and, and some of the things that you produce can be quite different. You know, so this kind of work is created in a digital environment and fully digital, and then, you know, becomes something else. Um, and then this thing actually has a, like a AR, element to it so if you take a take your phone and you have the app downloaded you can actually then have this sort of separate experience from it um, I'd strongly encourage you to sort of scroll down and you can see some of those some of this uh, strange animation the person's done which is I don't know I, I think it's quite interesting quite beautiful obviously heavily influenced or heavily reliant on the human body as a form um, and it's, yeah, I like it actually. It's quite pretty in a lot of ways. But then again, the outcome is this kind of public sculpture. Okay, now this is my favorite work of the ones we're gonna look at today. Um, this is an artist named uh, Syriac and has done dozens of really beautiful, interesting, strange videos that are funny and bizarre. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's using, it's entirely digitally generated, you know, using maybe individual images of animals or something, but then obviously using digital tools to create these things. Uh, and they are complete artworks, and they've done well for themselves in terms of being able to have a career just making these strange generated images. Uh, sorry, strange generated animations. <laughs> You know, and it's using imagery, I guess, that is common. Um, and you can see this one has 25 million views, and probably a lot of that's because there's, of course, a cat involved, and people like cat imagery. But some of the other work that they've done, if you click on the username, um, you can see that each one of their videos has millions of people that are watching it and playing around with it. And they're all quite surreal, all sort of rethinking body parts or animal parts and doing it in these kind of strange ways. Um, and so I would encourage you to look through it uh, and watch more of these videos because I, 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 I really love them and the way they're using digital tools 
I think is quite original and uh, has been quite consistent in terms of producing interesting work for a, a while now. Even wrote a novel, which is kind of cool, about a weird horse. Um, all right. So I am going to stop it there because we're reaching the start of chapter two, which is digital technologies as a medium and new media art. Um, again, that would be here. So we'll pick it up then on Monday, but this is just a brief little introduction, a little discussion of the first, some of the select projects from chapter one. And again, read the introduction and chapter one. And otherwise, uh, make sure that you've gone to Discord, show the animated GIF you've made, turn in the other animated GIF on Sunday, and then we can talk about them all on Monday. Cool. Again, congratulations to humanity for putting a, another SUV-sized rover on Mars. Um, I personally find it quite amazing, but I guess there's an argument for that money can be spent in other ways as well. So there's always different sides. Um, all right, kids. So I will see you all on Monday. Have a good weekend. And uh, bye. <laughs>